Today I got the question, what if I'm a barista and I'm looking to get out of the rat race in Los Angeles? How do I go about getting to Nicaragua with only about $4,000 of savings? That's a tricky one, so let's talk about that right after the bump. One of the hardest things for people to do is move from traditional work where you're going into an office or working at a location, especially if you're in food service, retail, or anything where you're dealing directly with customers or in the case of a barista, making products with your hands and then you know turning them over to customers. That's very difficult to transition into pretty much anything else somewhere else unless you're able to do the same job or something similar. And coming to a place like Nicaragua, that's gonna be super challenging because you can't translate the skills of being a barista into a new location. You're not gonna be allowed to work as a barista in Nicaragua unless you are investing and opening your own shop and going through the process of paying for the investment, hiring employees, that's a requirement, um, and turning it into an investor uh, residencia, and then you would be allowed to work in your own shop. Of course, if you own a really small shop and it's just you and you're not going for residencia, there's situations where you can make it work, but you would have to be opening your own shop. You would not be allowed to work for anyone else, nor would you really want to, and it would not be uh, able to support you. You wouldn't be able to earn enough money as a barista working in Nicaragua to qualify for other types of residencia, so your long-term plans wouldn't be working out anyway. Lots of complications come with this kind of situation. So the idea that you're working as a barista in Los Angeles and you want to come to Nicaragua means you have to find an alternative so form of income, which is something that he asked straight up. So yeah, he's on board, he understands, but that's just anyone who's looking at this. That's something you have to understand is you have to make a jump into something that is more mobile. Now, what does that mean? So let's start with the, the second part of the question is he has $4,000 saved up. Is that going to be, or what's that going to do for him moving into a new country? Well, it's not going to give him a lot to work with, but if you're super frugal, you can in theory make this work pretty well. And of course, if you have income coming in plus $4,000, of course you're okay. But the question is, if you have $4,000 saved, where is that going to get you? Well, it's going to get you down down to Nicaragua. It'll probably help you get into your first apartment. It'll help you get a long-term lease, like a six-month or a 12-month, and allow you to purchase your absolutely bare-bones appliances and get up and running. That is a fridge. That is a range or a toaster oven. That is maybe a microwave, some, some plastic plates, like real simple stuff, um, and of course a bed and those things, right? And have enough cash on hand to allow you to run for several months once you have those things. Of course, you're going to cook at home. You're not going to be going out partying. You're going to be spending your time trying to find work or whatever. And I would not necessarily recommend moving and then trying to find work, right? Start that journey first. But we have to understand, like, what is your run rate, as we would say, in a business context? And realistically, if you had to, we know people who are living down here getting down to about $800 per month when they own a house. Uh, of course, if you want a car or you want to pay rent, those things are going to be on top of that. But uh, if you're single and you're being really, really frugal, in theory, you could get your monthly expenses down to about $800, including your rent, uh, especially if you find a place that is very inexpensive. So if you're putting in, say, $2,000 to get everything set up, they may give you two or three months that you can run off of your cash uh, and and get all set up without having to worry about outside income. Now, of course, at the end of that, you're going to be in a panic for outside income. So obviously, that is not a situation you want to get into, but you do want to have at least a few months of capability or enough cash on hand to comfortably be able to buy your appliances and get set up so that you can go from living abroad or living at home to living home, the country you're coming from, Los Angeles, uh, in this case, to Nicaragua, you want to have enough cash on hand to get those appliances so you can start cooking at home. So you don't have to have a hotel. So you don't have to, right, you want to get out of those expensive things, going to restaurants all the time, whatever, really quickly so that you get into that lower cost lifestyle right away. And then you can start building your, your nest egg back up and be good to go in no time. Now, when we're looking at work options. You have a couple different approaches to take here. One is find some kind of online job that is going to be something you can do and you're willing to do and, and you'll be able to do from Nicaragua. There's a ton of these out there, but I, there's no way for me to tell you what it's going to be. I don't know what skills you have. I don't know what interest you have. And I don't know who's hiring right now, right? It's the world of working online. It's every job in the universe that's online, which is a lot of jobs. So start looking around at what careers you might be interested in. And it could just be a job or it could be a career where you're able to work remotely. This could be something in the graphics design field, a technical field, a literary field, a writing field, an educating field, a uh, teaching English online. There's a million people doing that. That one's super difficult. 
mean, you name it. There are so many online jobs out there that all you have to do is get one and you just have to find something that you're interested in or that you're good at, that, that people want you to do, and you'll be good to go. So uh, you remember that any job you're taking from the U.S., even if it's just at minimum wage, is going to be so much more money than you need to be able to live here. That doesn't mean that you want to go that lean. Of course, you hope to make more, but if you're making just 8 or $9 an hour in the U.S., that's still pushing $1,000 or so per month income that you're able to get tax-free in Nicaragua. Now, remember your first year, you're not tax-free. Although if you're only making minimum wage, you're generally tax-free anyway. But if you're starting to grow a little bit, you're making $12 an hour, whatever, and you're coming down here, you get your first year, you're going to still pay taxes like you're in the U.S. But once you've established that you're outside the U.S. for a complete year, you're going to get that no taxes in the U.S. or essentially no taxes on your income tax in the U.S., which at really low income is a tiny, tiny, tiny boost. But at larger incomes, it can be really significant, up to about $126,000 per year, which you don't really need to worry about in this case. But it is a consistent consideration for a lot of people. But you don't need a ton of money. Minimum wage will be quite livable. Now, of course, you really want to get higher than that. You want to look at, but, you know, start with any job that lets you move. The sooner you get here, the sooner you get into that chill lifestyle, the sooner you get to relax, the sooner you start get to build your life and get out of the rat race, because that's your concern, right? At least from the question, the goal is to get to that point where you're feeling good and you're getting into that good life that you want to have. And you can do that you just need to get past some step that gives you enough income that one, you won't have any problem with residencia. Just think, you know, for a while you can be a tourist, but at some point they're going to, you know, probably if you find that this is what you want to do, you're going to be staying here full time. You're probably going to want to get uh, either a rentista or a pensione or an investment, something, and be able to stay officially indefinitely. And when you do that, you want to make sure you have enough income to qualify, which is no big deal. It's barely above minimum wage in the U.S. and you'll be in no problem. So, you want to find something, but even if you start at minimum wage, uh, even if it's not 40 hours a week, you can always increase that over time. Keep looking for a better job, move up in the field that you're in, find a new career that you can do online and just grow it over time. As long as you have enough income to live off of, which if you have 4,000 in the bank and you can come up with a job paying eight, $900 a month, and you're willing to live really frugally while you make the transition until you find a better job, you are good to go. So consider that that's the only barrier you get to. And it could be that you're taking a job that's minimum wage and you're working 40 hours a week. Or maybe you're taking a job that pays $18, $19, $20 an hour and you only have to work 20 hours a week to be able to come up with enough to make it make sense. And working 20 hours a week online, no commute, no rat race, and being able to live in paradise, yes, frugally, but able to live in paradise, I think you'll probably find that you're pretty happy. Once Nicaragua is a place that you're really interested in and looks really good to you, that's going to get you over that hump and that's what's important at this stage. I had to switch hats because while it's not very warm out, it is crazy humid because we just had some rain and we got some more coming and I did not want to sweat in the paper hat that was a gift. So I'm back in my regular hat anyway. Okay, so yes, you could just move down with your with your cash in hand and hope for the best and find something as you go. And if you have a fallback plan, right, someone who's going to bail you out if you're not able to find any work or whatever. Great. You know, obviously getting out of the U.S., getting to a point where you're relaxed, all that's going to make your life easier. It's going to be that much easier to find something online if you're not working full time, if you're not in the rat race, if you're not commuting, if you're not expending huge amounts of money in Los Angeles, then that will give you the time to focus on finding an online job. So, okay, that's possible. It's also an option to take contract work. Now, this is often not a great idea because you have to constantly fight for it, hope you find something and it never ends because as soon as one thing's done, you got to find the next thing. But it's plausible. There's a lot of tools out there like Fiverr, and I don't even know. I don't use any of them. But those things exist, and people go out and take whatever services that they have to offer, whether it's uh, being a personal assistant, answering phones, doing sales, whatever, and just uh, designing logos. All depends on your skill set and doing those as is needed. Now, that's an important one that I just mentioned in there, and this goes for all jobs everywhere. And something that people often don't think about is call center work. If you're doing something that is on the phone, Nicaragua is perfect for that. We have really good internet. Phones work perfectly from here. It's very easy to have a desk phone or a, any number of different phone options that work with the U.S. Trust me, everything works with the U.S. So a company would have to go through such extreme lengths to make your phone not work because they work just as well or better from here than they do in the U.S. And no matter what you think a company phone is going to work like, it works better here. You're going to say, but it's not. No, it works 
better here. I have lots of videos about phones. So if you're doing a call center job, whether it's outbound sales, outbound customer service, checking, anything like that, you can do that job from here. Now, the company may not let you, you may not, you know, there's a lot of complications on the permission side, but from a technical standpoint, the job can be done from here. The same as from the US, no problem at all. Same thing with inbound. You're doing inbound sales, you're taking inbound customer service, you're a call center doing scheduling or any number of things. Yes, all those things can be done here and they're done here every day. It's one of the biggest industries in the country, but the people who are doing it mostly here are Nicaraguans working for foreign companies uh, and doing those phone services. And that's great. However, there are a lot of companies that demand hiring Americans for those kinds of roles. And it's that you're an American with an American passport that they care about. They don't care about where you physically sit. They want, you know, when they have customers and say, I want to speak to an American. It's unfortunate that people are like that, but they are. And a lot of companies want to hire Americans and be able to prove that they're speaking to an American when they call in for customer service or whatever. And you can do that job just as well from here as from the U.S. In fact, you can demonstrably do it much better from here than in the U.S. So that is a real job that you can do from here, but you're working in the U.S. So anything that's on the phone is ideal for Nicaragua. That's not just something you can make work. It, it's really hard to find any way that that could be better because of the, the cost, the technology, just everything comes together to make that kind of the perfect thing for people looking to work from Nicaragua. It's kind of the sweet spot, if you will. Now, so we talked about traditional jobs, the phones kind of play into everything. We talked about contract jobs, and now the last thing is forming your own business. This is a lot harder, this takes a lot more creativity, but in a lot of cases, people uh, can find that a lot of the barriers they may run up against in other areas uh, are barriers through the HR process, and by forming their own company, they bypass HR, form a company in the United States, do work through that company, and your customers don't necessarily have any right or visibility to see or say anything about where your staff sits. Or they may ask, but you have a lot of flexibility because your company's based in the U.S. And yes, this takes a lot more planning. It takes a lot more work and you have to have something for that company to do. It's not a silver bullet. But for a lot of people, you may, for example, if you wanted to do logo design or you wanted to do graphics design or you wanted to do software engineering or just any number of things, right? The, the, there's so many skills in the universe, right? All of them. Uh, that can be done online. You can form your own business. Like if you can't find work, wow, we just lost the uh, tripod, just went over all by itself. If you can't find work working for someone and you don't wanna do contract work through a service uh, to do that, you can form your own company and go out and bid on projects, or if it's something we're just creating uh, material is something that you do, you can go out and create that material. As an example, let's say that your hobby was doing pixel art and you like making pixel art for video games. You're not making video games, you're not doing anything of the sort, but you really like making pixel art for video games, or you really like doing stock photography, just some examples. Well, those are things you could do in the US and you could sell your work. Let's say you sell a pack of pixel art for $20 at a shot, or you do some stock photography and someone uses your photo for say $3, and if you're living in the U.S., you have to sell, you know, a thousand, two thousand of each of those per month, and that may put a roof over your head. Well, that exact same, you can do that pixel art just as easy or easier in Nicaragua. You can do that stock photography just as easy in Nicaragua and sell it just as much from Nicaragua at the exact same rates but you don't need nearly as much to live. Instead of having to bring in four, five, six thousand dollars per month, you only have to bring in one or two thousand dollars per month to live better in most cases. If you could keep bringing in $4,000 a month, you can be living really, really well off of those projects. Now, again, you have to have that skill set, right? It has to be something that you're good enough in to be able to sell things. So it's not a silver bullet, but it's a real consideration. If you were thinking of, well, I've, I really like doing pixel art for video games. I want to sell stuff on the Unity Asset Store examples, right? If you're in the US, it might be like, yeah, but I'll never make enough to live on. I might be able to bring in a thousand, two thousand dollars a month, but it would take me years to get a big enough catalog to pay the bills and it'd be super risky and I'm just really worried about it. But coming to Nicaragua, you could be like, well, I only have to sell one or two assets to be able to make it, you know, well per month. And then it pays for you to stay home and build that business, which is your own business, just creating assets. And you're able to sell those and get it up to three or $4,000 by growing your portfolio. Just an example of one type of business that is really easy to do from Nicaragua and dramatically easier with zero downsides compared to doing it in the U.S. for the U.S. market. 
And this can apply to so many things. If you're doing voiceover work, if you're doing uh, uh, software engineering, if you're doing architectural design and you don't need to be on site, like I don't know all the creative or, or different types of uh, careers that might be interesting to you. I don't know what kind of businesses might be interested to you. This is where it gets really difficult. The world is huge. There's so many different types of things. I can't even possibly name all the jobs that exist in, in a day, right? If I had everyone written down, I couldn't read them all off. But nearly every field has a large number of jobs that are done or could be done online. And whether you're working as an employee, working as a contractor, or starting your own business to supply those things, all of those are options. And of course, what if you took a job at $20, $25 an hour, and you only work 20 hours a week, but instead of taking the rest of the time to just you know, kick back and watch a sunset, which is a great idea, you could take that extra 20 hours and put it into content creation or creating assets or firing up a small business and figuring out things that you're interested in and want to do and build your own business while you're covering the bills with regular work for someone else, even just part time. Uh, or what I did, I started a business working full time during the night, I worked overnights and started my own business during the day. And I worked full time at both. That was exhausting. And I was young. But that was the way that I managed to bootstrap my company while not taking on crippling debt to do so and not putting my family at risk. I was single at the time, but not putting myself at risk that I wouldn't be able to pay my rent or whatever, because I was still working during the day. So you want to have some kind of safety net, you want to have some kind of protection that you're going to have enough income that you're able to cover, you know, basic rent, you're going to keep the, the internet on, you're going to keep your power flowing and everything here in Nicaragua, but that number can be really small, 800. Technically, you could get it down to like 500 if you're being extreme, but you'd be at that point probably quite unhappy with how you're living and you're starting to take a lot of risks. If you can own now, if you can get it down to 500, but you have more, that's fine, right? Could be as lean as you want to be, but you don't want to be running at a rate where it's like, oh, I only am bringing in $500. I'm going to try to live off of that and just hope for the best. If anything goes wrong, you have no fallback. But if you're bringing in 800, 1,000, 1,200 a month, and you're like, I'm going to see if I can get down to 500 in my actual spending, and I'm going to bank the rest. Well, after six months, you can have banked enough to live for the next six months. You can start being risky and, you know, starting to look for another job. You can, you know, take some risks of starting your own business or whatever, you, or just have a level of comfort that maybe you can spend a little bit more per month, or you can just relax and keep that money in savings or putting it in, put it into investments so that it's potentially, you know, growing in the background to protect you even more. You have a lot of options. There's, unfortunately, there's no way for me to give you just a what you should do. That's not possible. And I don't think you expect that, but it's just there's no way for me to give really good, solid advice other than start to make the transition, figure out today what you want to do that you'd be able to do from Nicaragua. Don't even consider trying to find work in Nicaragua. There's never going to be a good solution that path, but working from Nicaragua through one of these channels is almost always going to be so easy to make enough money to live really comfortably that it's well worth it. That's if you're Finding that Nicaragua is your interest. If you want to get out of the rat race, like you said, you want to get into paradise, you want to be able to relax, you want to be able to spend your evenings kicking back, having a beer, listening to live music, enjoying beautiful sunsets, whether on the beach or up in the mountains or, or exploring a new city in Latin America or just you know getting involved in new culture. And one of my favorite activities in Nicaragua is just kicking out the, the fold-up chairs and putting them out on the sidewalk in front of your little house in a little you know barrio neighborhood and sitting out on the sidewalk as the neighbors come by and everybody cracks open a beer and sits around talking about the day like this can be a really great life. The things that people picture as like the, the quintessential American uh, dream, but that never came to fruition for people, they actually can do that here. And you can do it on that $1,000 a month kind of range. 800, a little bit tough, can be done. 1,000, definitely can be done. 2,000, you are golden. And I would say, if you are in that working mode, Try to get up three, four thousand dollars per month. That's a really, really comfortable number. And don't spend it all. Earn that much, bank the majority of it, but you can have a really, really good life with a little creativity. So that first step, figure out what you would want to do. No one can answer that for you. Only you know which things are going to pique your interest. Only you know which things you feel an inert desire to do or skill at or feel that you can move into. Find that field and either get a job in it right away or figure out what you need to do to move into it. Like I said, pixel art for Unity Asset Store. Yeah, you're not going to just pick up a, you know, uh, Asprite today, start playing around with things and have uh, uh, stuff to sell in the Unity store tomorrow. But 
you're certainly not going to get there if you don't start your journey right away. So start making those, those assets or whatever, practice, learn, take classes, start your journey immediately so that you can move into the field or create the company or whatever that you desire. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. It is greatly appreciated. It really means a lot, all the support that you guys give. Trust me, it really helps make all this possible and helps me on my emotional journey uh, towards uh, everything that we do. And for those who are really committed, there is a join button to actually become a member of the community and automatically give a small amount every month. Thank you so much to our members. It, that really means a lot as well. Really quick updates. Josie Mar from yesterday's episode did make it to El Salvador. He is alive. He did not make his flight, not even close. Uh, he is now stranded in El Salvador, but he's healthy and alive. Uh, my knee, which I fell on the other day, is pretty gruesome. It hurts a lot. It's only been two full days since I fell. It's still, it's no longer seeping. Um, I finally have that under control, but it is a very painful wound and it's really hindering my ability to get out and do things. I can't even have like my shorts touching it. Uh, it's pretty bad, but it'll be fine in not too long. The doctor has looked at it. The doctor did clean it out and it'll be okay. Thanks for joining me. I'll see all of you tomorrow.